in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always. Welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth. I am the host of this internet ministry. My YouTube username, I go by the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Number 7, I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like for you to bear with me in this discussion like you would bear and tolerate your car that is out in cold weather and when you begin to turn the key instead of starting up immediately it hesitates <laughs> And that is how I feel right now. So bear with me while I go until I finally hit that ignition where we can go so we can go on down this road where I would like for us to go. This is a continuation of our discussion about exactly what is black conscious. I would like for you to join myself and co-host David Brayboy if it be the will of the creation if time permits so. This Saturday, January the 29th, 2011, 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the link is in the more information box down below to the blog talk radio version of the Realities Temple Internet Ministry. The topic is exactly what is black conscious. And I have chosen this discussion because due to recent events, you know, I just noticed, I always like to say because, because, be because, 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 because. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I got this habit or have this habit of always saying, and because, and because, and because, because. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just a habit. I want to break that habit because <laughs> I'm tired of always saying, and because. <laughs> Maybe that's just my style. I don't know. But anyway, please. Feel free to join us on Radio Blog Talk this Saturday, January the 29th at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Radio Blog Talk. The topic is exactly what is black conscious. It's a continuation of our radio show from last week. And this should be part of the discussion due to recent events that evolve pornography that involve sex because you can't have pornography without sex that's how it goes right <laughs> so we want to talk about in this in these few minutes we want to talk about sex from the viewpoint of how we should interact with sex from the viewpoint or standpoint 
of what we call black liberation. We begin our journey with sex. Of course, all of us are products of sex. Our mothers and our fathers, hopefully in love, a lot of time nowadays due to lust. But whether it is love or lust, it is the act of sexual intercourse that brings us into this life. Without that action, I would not be speaking with you today. Without that action, you would not be listening. So sex brings us into this life. And in order for any life form to exist or to continue in this life, they must continue to act upon this instinct of the male and the female coming together to produce this life in order for it to continue on into the next time period. If there is one, because time is not guaranteed for nobody, as there have been many life forms on this planet that no longer exist. And if the human being, no matter what your color is, if we continue to behave in the manner that we have been behaving in within the last few thousand years on this self destructive type of mentality, then surely the human being would join the dodo bird and the human being would join the passenger pigeon and the mammoth and the dinosaurs. We will pass into extinction. And for me, perhaps that might be a good thing because, there we go with because, because we have not earned and we have not justified Living, being the intelligent life form that we are, we are not acting like we are intelligent. We are acting and behaving less sometimes than the beasts of the field. So we have not, with all our intelligence, we have not justified living. So the prophets of religion don't see a pretty picture for the human being, the prophets of religion, and even some of us living today who prophesize, we don't see a beautiful future for humanity. We see the human being raised up to a certain level and then destroyed, never to be seen again, extinct. And why? It's because of an unnatural behavior, your abuse and exploitation of the sexual act and not living up and not maturing from the sperm and the egg, you continue, you are supposed to, because of your intelligence, you are supposed to evolve higher than the lion and the wildebeest and the giraffe. And techno, technologically. Did I pronounce that? Did I say that correctly? Technologically wise. We have the light bulb. We have the computer. We have telephones. We have evolved in that. But our thinking. Is like that. Of worse than the beast. That's why it is called a dog-eat-dog -dog world. How can this be a dog-eat-dog -dog world when we are human beings? Talk to me and answer that question. And in this world that's supposed to be of human beings, how can we even dare Say and make come out of our, out of our mouths. Only the strong survive. 
That is the way of the jungle. That is the way of the beast. So if this is a dog-eat-dog -dog world and only the strong survive, then you and I, we are not acting and behaving as human beings because I am very sure the human being is beyond brute strength. Beyond being in that savage type of condition. But surely I must be incorrect to say that we are indeed human beings. We are intellectual savages. And that's a new term that I use now. You are nothing but savages that can use a computer. Savages that can turn on a light bulb. Savages that build a machine that can go out into the upper realm of space. But when you come down, when you turn off the computer, you're no better than the dog or the cat or the dolphin or whale or lion. In fact, some of us, we compare ourselves. I'm the mighty lion. I'm the mighty bear. Because in essence and the reality is, you are a beast just like them. That's why you can embrace the beast way of life. And that's why in a lot of cases, some of y'all easily say, a dog is my best friend. Why is a dog your best friend? Because you've never been and you never met a human being. You're just used to dealing with savages. And animal-like people. So I'd rather have a dog as a best friend than one of y'all. What difference do it make? I can control the dog easier. <laughs> one of our problems is that we're not human beings. We wear pretty shirts and ties. We put on wonderful clothes. We can, sip, we can sip our tea in a cup with our finger out proper. But that's nothing but a facade. Because as soon as darkness falls, as soon as somebody turns their back, in fact, we are so wild, we don't even care. We're not even keeping it in the dark no more. We're acting Savage, right out in the light, and proud of it. Hmm. We do things, if a dog, or a gorilla, or any other animal, if they could talk, they would tell you how shame they feel for you and me. Because we claim to be human beings, and some of us claim to be God. Some of us have these titles, kings and queens. Is this the behavior of God? Is this the behavior of royalty? Talk to me. Because if it is, you are in definite bad shape. And if you are God, what kind of condition are your servants if you are in the condition that you are in? If you are king and queen and acting like an intelligent savage, then I wonder... How do your, what is the mentality of your servants? Because all gods and all kings and queens, all of them have servants. I wonder about us. When we talk and when we do things, do we really know what we're saying or doing? The history of sex goes back to the beginning and the creation of male and female. But I want to talk about our interaction with sex under slavery. Because we were taken out of our nature or whatever we was. We don't know what we were doing. Maybe what we were doing in the motherland, maybe it was unnatural behavior too. We don't know. So our sojourn Begins 400 years ago in chains, entrapped under the guidance of another man 
claiming to be a man, but a beast, a wolf in sheep's clothing, and and a sheep is a beast. The sheep is not human. How does sex start with us? Sex start with us. When the slave master took us out of our nature or whatever we were doing, we definitely wouldn't, we were not slaves. We had our own way of viewing and interacting sex. But as a slave, your sex and how you view sex and what you become is now controlled by your master. And the first thing the master done was to make you a breeder. So the black man who was supposed to be the protector of the black woman, the protector of the family, he protects nothing. He is now property. And he becomes property for over 300 some years if not longer and black man when you become property you're no longer a father so many of you you use that title father but you really don't know what it means to be father and nor mother you and I we become breeders we base father and mother on religious belief. How a religion that we adopt teaches us how to be a father, teaches us how to be a mother. But we don't know really what that is by nature. Father and mother. But one thing for sure, for over 300 years, you were not father, you were not mother, you was breeding stock. We were animals. Enslaved by animals. And the black man was turned into a stud. A black woman. Of whom the, this devil called a witch. He would take the witch and take the stud and throw him in a room. And y'all do what y'all got to do. And the witch might say, I... I don't like him. And the stud might say to say, I don't like, I don't care what you don't like. You and her is my best animals. I need for you to produce me some more strong, hardy breeding stock. You were treated, we were treated just like you do your dogs and your cats. And your cows and your chickens. Remember this. And this went on not for 30 days. Not for uh, 30 years. This happened to us for over 300 years. You just don't break that mentality. And it happened for so long. 